Okay, so good morning everyone. What we are going to discuss now is all about genogram or genogram, wherein you are going to trace certain physical um, personality or behavioral attributes through generations. All right, so what is being depicted or shown in this picture? Okay, so definitely it is a picture of um, a family. So uh, you will be able to identify various family members in your family as well as um, other, member, uh, other members of your kin when illustrating your family genogram. So in this lesson, um, let us learn more about how your family genogram will help you trace physical, personality, or behavioral attributes through generation. So, but let's first define what is a genogram or a genogram. It is a graphic uh, representation of a family tree that displays, uh, displays detailed data on relationships among individuals. So, a genogram is a more complex family tree because it describes not only the family's physical and social relationships, but also the emotional connections and other family attributes. So it's not a typical family tree wherein there are pictures of your um, parents as well as your siblings. So um, little may malalaman at marututunan kayong iba't ibang symbols that you are going to use in making genogram. Ano po? Okay, next is, yan. So, it is first developed and popularized in clinical settings by Monica McGoldrick and the Randy Gerson through the publication of a book in 1985. So, genograms are now used by various groups of people in a variety of fields, such as um, in medicine, in psychology, in social work, even in genetic research, and um, of course, in, gener uh, in education. And so, a genogram is also known as Mac Goldrick. Gerson study uh, as they are the one or they are the proponents of this kind of model. And next is okay, so who is um, Murray Bowen? So he invented the concept of the genogram as part of his family systems model in the 1970s. So, genograms were later developed and popularized in clinical settings by Monica McCaldrick and Randy Gerson through the publication of a book titled Genograms Assessment and Intervention in 1985. So, genograms are also used for personal records and um, to explain family dynamics to the client. Okay, so uh, let's proceed with the basic symbols in making genograms. So it is um, family tree or map or history that uses special symbols to describe relationships of uh, family members over multiple generations. So like any um, other graphic organizer, a genogram we are uh, um, make it more easy for you or for other people to present and comprehend certain information. So we have different symbols in making genogram. So we have a square symbol in pertaining a male, then circle for a female, triangle for pregnancy, or pregnant women, then circle with an, um, what do you call this, an upside down triangle at the center for, um, uh, triangle at the center for gay, then square 
with an upside down triangle at the center for lesbian. Okay, so next is, so we have a straight line for married, then on the straight line with one slant line at the center for separated, then straight line with two slant lines at the center for divorce, then an X or a cross mark or a cross mark for death, then a square and circle with a zigzag line um, connect, uh, connecting the two shapes for conflictual relationship. Then a square and circle for three lines connecting the two shapes uh, for a very close relationship. And a square and circle with a dotted line connecting the two shapes for um, distant relationship okay so next let's proceed with this one and so um a square and there is a cross mark or an x mark at the center for death then a question mark for no gender then a diamond for pet and um adopted child for a uh, square with dotted lines and for foster child a square with uh, small dotted lines and then for a pregnancy um there is um a triangle then for miscarriage a triangle and there is a cross mark inside the triangle for abortion, a triangle, then a cross mark, and um, a horizontal line at the center for abortion, then uh, fraternal twins, um, one square, and uh, one circle, and for identical twins, um, two, we have two squares. Ano so, ano ba pagsasabi natin ang um, fraternal and identical twins? Ano ba ang pagkakaiba doon? Ano ba ang pagkakaiba ng dalawang yung mga anak? So, when we say identical twins or monozy uh, monozygotic twins, and so, um, they develop into two babies with exactly the same genetic information. So, as in magkamukha-mukha sila. Ano po? So, for fraternal or for dizygotic twins, so they produce two genetically unique uh, children. Ano po? So, it can be a, a girl, one girl and a boy, pero sila ay twins. Ano po? Uh, usually, hindi masyado lang magkamuka. Ayan. So, that is uh, the difference between fraternal and identical twins. Ayan. So, even in emotional aspects, we also have uh, different um, uh, genogram symbols. And for hate, there is a um, square and a circle, then um, my three connecting lines behind the center. Then for distrust, we have a square and a circle as well. Then um, uh, one line and uh, vertical lines at the center. Then for violence, we have uh, zigzag lines. And for emotional abuse, it is also a zigzag lines, but it is as uh, mas mali mas ano po compare sa violence and in uh, physical abuse dun sa katapat ng violence. Ano po? So, kung makakansin ninyo, uh, iba't iba yung zigzag pattern nila. Ano po? Ayan. So, for manipulative, there is uh, an arrow. Then, there is a cross mark at the center. Then, for in love, there is um a line at the center. Then, uh, two uh, interlapping uh, circles sa gitna. Then, 
for best friend for best friends we have two vertical lines and two horizontal lines and vertical lines at the center then for uh, physical abuse ayan so may pagkakaiba la ang, ang a zigzag pattern niya compare to violence ano po for sexual abuse naman uh, we have two um small zigzag lines and for controlling we have an arrow and then um square the center and cross mark inside the square ano po? and so what is next so we uh also have this one again so for heart disease we have um a square and then sa upper left corner ng square we have another small square there and uh a red color inside ano po? so that is for heart disease so if someone kung mga kamag-anak ninyo is suffering from that kind of diseases. Ayan. So, pwede mo nyo gamitin yung mga symbols na yan. Ano po? Ayan. So, next is for breast cancer. We have a circle inside then a square at the upper right corner of the uh, circle. Then, a red color again. Ano po? Then, for diabetes, a square. Then, another square at the left lower corner and it is colored um green and then for alzheimer disease we have a circle uh, shape then at the upper uh, right corner of the circle there is a square and a yellow colored then for down uh, down syndrome a square then another uh, small square inside um placed in a uh, uh, lower left corner of the square and it's colored blue then for depression we have square then um a lower right corner there is a uh, a square, small square inside the circle, and then it's colored black. And for smoking, we have a square with um, a violet line. Ano po? Kulay violet po ang kulay ng square. Then for uh, substance abuse, there is a um, color red circle. And so next is, okay, and so we have uh, different ways in making a uh, genogram. So we have number one, know your reasons for making a genogram to help you determine the type of family information you want to indicate. Next, number two, name all the members of your family kinship that you wanted to include in your genogram. So number three, organize questions to gather facts and figures about your relatives to be included in the genogram. And number four, write down notes how everyone in your family is connected. So solicit information starting with the oldest generation down the line. Okay. Okay, so let us try to examine how well you have learned from this lesson by doing this activity. So you're going to make your own family genogram. So for direction, um, you're going to make a genogram of your family by using the symbols that you have learned. So consider the family physical, social, and emotional relationships and other family attributes. You are going to do your activity in a short bond paper. So, okay, so that's it for this lesson. I hope you all gained another knowledge and new information. And see you all in our next video lecture.
Thank you.